Just a quick footnote on this video. The sound quality isn't the best, but I hope you forgive that because I think this has got plenty of good information that you'll find interesting. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm going to show you why I unfortunately have to cut this peach tree almost back to stump level and get rid of all of this beautiful fruit. Let's get into it. You would think, you know, most people would be happy to have such a big, beautiful peach tree in their backyard producing literally hundreds of fruit. But unfortunately, I'm not. And the reason for it is fruit fly, two types, the Queensland fruit fly and the Mediterranean fruit fly. So a European version that's been introduced into Australia. I'll open this peach up. It looks perfectly good from the outside, a beautiful flat peach, nice and plump not getting to its biggest capacity and straight away on the inside you can see here the maggots look at that see that those awful little maggots and what they'll do is they'll keep eating and developing and then they will go into the soil underneath the tree develop further, turn into a fruit fly and infest more fruit. And I can't have that. The problem with having a big tree like this, although it's great and produces a lot of fruit and it's healthy, is I can't net it. I can't physically put a big net over it and I can't even net branches individually. It's just too hard to do it. So what I'm going to do is cut the tree back, start again, keep it small so I can net it easier. I'm going to mulch it up through the mulcher so I destroy as much of these as possible, fruit and all, and then I'm going to run my mower on a really low level all around this tree and chop up as much of that remaining fruit on the ground as I can. It's probably something that I should have got onto a lot earlier, but pruning the fruit tree now is better than never, and just letting it fester on, and even letting it get really big and blocking out other trees that aren't affected by fruit fly. This apple tree is a really good in-between example. It's not near as big as the peach tree, but it still is getting on the larger size. I certainly will be trimming this tree back substantially once we've got a harvest out of it this season. So that next season, it's much easier to manage. But in the meantime, I'm happy to bag as much fruit as I can within reason and I'm still confident we'll get at least 50 nice apples out of this tree. So when you have an in-between tree or indeed a tree like this that's still medium sized but still too large to net, bagging is definitely the best option. And I would rather have several small trees that I can bag or net easy than one or two really large trees with plenty of fruit and difficult to manage. So yeah, last season at this size, and she's getting a really big prune back. These little bags with the closed end, they're handy, they work okay and they're inexpensive, but I do prefer these longer bags with the open ends. Both ends are open, it's like a sock, well, open sock. You just slide it over the branch and you can get a lot more fruit, especially types of fruit like apples that could be all along one stem or one branch. And if the bag is an overkill, you can always just tie it off at the end or tie up any excess if you want, or just leave it hang. A fruit saver net like this one here over this golf gold plum is a really easy option. You can just slip it straight over. You can either wrap it around the base of the tree and tie it there with some rope or twine, or you can use some clamps like I've done. I've just clamped it and that is secure from insects and also larger type of pests like birds etc. Even bats and possums won't usually try to chew through this stuff. It's really strong nylon, it's like fly screen. The downside is though, these nets are quite expensive. You're looking at around 50 to maybe 100 bucks depending on the size and whilst it's easy enough just to slip over longevity wise i've got to be honest with you they say that if you look after these things you can get many years use out of them it's not unusual for me anyway to notice small rips and tears like when an animal might try to get at the fruit or just from a branch getting hooked on it 
and then before you know it you've got several holes in the thing and that can be a problem when you're trying to stop a fruit fly because they only need a few fruit fly to get through and then they can sting and infest the fruit on the tree that can then undo all that time and effort and money spent on protecting the tree so these nets whilst they are pretty hardy and you can look after them and mend holes it can be a fairly expensive exercise and of course the bigger the tree the harder it is to fully net like this there are other options of course, you can get cheaper netting, you could get just insect netting that you could use for camping and put a gazebo or something like effect or a framework over the tree to make it easier to net. There's plenty of different ways which I won't go into at the moment, but I'm also testing out a lot of different ways and methods also. But if I'm going to be really honest with you right here right now and over the last decade or so of experience I've had with netting and keeping pests away from your fruit, I would say that bagging is probably a better option for most situations. Even though bagging can be longer and arduous and boring to do, I still think that it's a more practical and cheaper way to protect fruit organically than trying to net the tree fully like this, especially like I said, when you're getting into the larger trees. I'm not going to big chainsaw. I'm just going to use this small electric pruning saw. Oh, yummy. Yeah. You can see the fruit are sitting on there rotting. Gosh. Not a nice place to be underneath when the fruit's dropping. Right here, I'll just tidy up those fallen branches. You can see I'm just left with pretty much a stump. I'll just cut up those smaller bran those branches into smaller pieces, and then we'll put them through the mulcher. I forgot to mention that there was also another one, another peach tree on the other side, in between a few mangoes and a loquat. That was not as big, but a similar height. And I had to cut that down as well. So I had two of the same because the first one was so successful at growing beautiful fruit when it was manageable that I thought, why not get a second one in? And the idea is to keep them small, have two trees rather than one big one, two small or medium sized trees so that they're easier to manage and bag the fruit. You could get away with spraying a really strong pesticide to get rid of the fruit fly but then that defeats the purpose of organic gardening. And it's also a bit dodgy in my mind, I'm not sure still uh, overall if, you know, backyard pesticides or systemic pesticides that that potent, that can kill an insect as they stink, sting the fruit, is it, you know, going to harm us in the long run, be carcinogenic and all those type of things. I think there's a very good likely chance that they're not good for us at all those chemicals so that's why i don't use them so bagging and netting the fruit is the only way that i can get around it and you can't net a really big fruit tree of course not all our fruit trees need netting not all of them are a target for fruit fly sometimes you only need to net some of the tree against certain birds and that deters them or even bats but we're not talking about that we're talking about this insect that loves stone fruit so, yeah, there was two of them that I cut down. Well, now I'll bring the mulcher in and we'll mulch it up. I've got it nice and tidied now.
All right, I think that'll do. What we'll do now is go over it with the mower and get all the rest of those, well, most of those pears and just mulch them into the lawn here. That'll do. All right, we've done it. Happy with that. All nice and tidy. Trees down. Seems a bit sad, I know, but those peach trees will come back next year and we'll have a small crop of peaches. Who knows, might have quite a large crop, but at least I'll be able to net them this time. So, don't feel too bad about it. I probably should have gone into this a lot earlier and kept them trimmed down, saved myself a, a bit of work, but it wasn't that bad. Made a pretty good go of it. Only took yeah, maybe just over an hour to get the whole job done. Make sure you give the video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share the video around because that helps heaps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.